Welcome to lecture two. In today's pre-lecture content, we are going to be discussing ordinary differential equations. So in this lecture, we're going to cover three points. The first point is we're going to be looking at what is an ordinary differential equation. And the reason why we're looking at these specifically is because we need to solve an ordinary differential equation to solve for quantum mechanical systems. And so I'm going to introduce to you what an ordinary differential equation is so you know when to recognize one. And then we're going to go through two classes of ordinary differential equations. The first one being a first order ordinary differential equation and the second being the second order differential equation. And then I'm going to provide an example of each and an example solution of each so that you have something that you can template how you're going to solve for your solutions in this course. Essentially what a differential equation looks like is it's an equation where you have the function itself mixed with derivatives of the function all together where essentially the rate of change of the function is related to the function itself. And so in this, this top example, what we have, this is for an electronic circuit where we have impedance, resistance, and capacitance. That's what the L, R, and C represent, and Q is the charge. But here we have the charge on the capacitor as a rate of time, we have the current through the resistor, and we have the rate of change of the, the current through the inductor. And all these three things are related to each other if we want to measure the voltage that we would measure in this circuit. And so a differential equation allows us to relate together all of these rates of change and all of these different components to be able to then understand what is happening inside the circuit. And some of you may recall from last semester when we were looking at kinetics, when we were solving rate laws, we would see that or what we were doing was solving an ordinary differential equation. Because you start with something that you would have a system that has a rate that is proportional to the value itself. And in the end, we integrated it and we were able to find the concentration in those cases for any time t. And that's what our goal is with differential equations and solving them, is that our goal is to be able to come up with a function, say in this top example, would be q, where we can find out what is the charge as a function of time. And that is if we were trying to solve it. Now again, this top one is called an ordinary differential equation because it only has one independent variable, meaning that it only has the time t. The second example down here this one is a partial differential equation, and it represents when there is more than one independent variable, meaning our original function is u, and it is a function of x and y. And so in this case, we have the double derivative with respect to x plus the double derivative with respect to y. And so that's why this is a partial differential equation. Now the final point in this slide that I want to highlight is the order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative that appears. And so in both these cases, the highest derivative that appears is the second derivative. So the order of both of these differential equations is 2. Other terminology when talking about classification of differential equations is this difference between if something is a linear differential equation or a nonlinear differential equation. And so again, this top example is an example of a linear differential equation. And what you're looking for is essentially you have derivatives that are to a certain order, and so that's what the y to the power of n represents is this to the degree at which the derivative is taken to the original function itself. And then you have these a0, a1, a n type terms as a function of t, and that they represent polynomials. So this would be t, t squared, terms with t cubed, and it doesn't include any nonlinear terms. And that's essentially what the, the difference between something that would be a linear differential equation to a nonlinear one, which is the example on the bottom where we have basically the, the double derivative of the angle of our pendulum as a function of time, and that's added to the acceleration due to gravity over the length of the string of the pendulum times sine theta is equal to zero. Well, the sine theta that's included in that second term, that makes this a nonlinear differential equation simply because it's a nonlinear term that's included inside the differential equation. So now that we've looked at some of the classifications of how differential equations look and how we might describe them. Let's look at solving a first order linear ordinary differential equation. Typically these things take the form that we have in the top part of the figure which is this dy by dt plus pt as a function or times y is equal to q of t. 
And basically, P of T and Q of T, those are just functions, which are just polynomial functions. They're just terms that are functions. They have T terms, T squared, T cubed. They're those kinds of terms, linear type terms. And that these differential equations, we're going to be sticking to the class where they're ones that they are separable. And that's what the example is on the bottom part of the slide, where we've combined somehow P of T and Q of T into this term G of T. And that if we had any terms of y, and that's basically the y term in the above, that it became f of y. And this is, again, we're trying to write this in a more general sense. But what we're trying to do is just create two terms, where one term is all the power, all the parts that have to do with y, and the other term is all the parts that have to do with t. And that means then we can then move one of the terms to the other side of the equal sign. So we get all the terms as a function of y equal all of the terms as a function of t. And then we can integrate both sides. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to apply this and solve an ordinary differential equation.